Hey everyone, this is Matt and I wanted to bring you today a video with some resources that I think can be really helpful for those of you who are parents or maybe grandparents uh, out there. Uh, I think some of these resources will be helpful for youth, but most of the resources I'm going to look at in this video are specifically geared towards kids. But I'll start the video talking about the youth stuff and then I'll move to the kids stuff and let you know when, when that ends um, so you can stop watching the video if, if you the kid stuff isn't as applicable to you anymore. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, first, I want to show you a book that my wife and I have started recently, uh, reading recently. It's called Parenting with Words of Grace, Building Relationships with Your Children, One Conversation at a Time. And what I love about this book is the pages are broken down into easy five-minute to read chapters. There's 32 chapters in this book, and every chapter is maybe... Uh, anywhere from three to five pages, maybe six pages occasionally. Uh, so pretty short chapters that you could read in about five minutes. It's, it's pretty uh, digestible in terms of the length of the chapters and the content they present. So you can just make little highlights that you need and go back to them later. Uh, we're really enjoying this book. Very practical, very helpful, just on how to lead your kids spiritually um, when you're in your conversations with them and how to be intentional and how to especially being just full of grace in our parenting. And um, so I'm really enjoying that one so far. A book that I just read a few weeks ago, it's a very short read, again, chapters maybe five minutes or less, is Raising Kids in a Screen-Saturated World. So this book in particular tackles how do we glorify God with how we use our screens and how we monitor our kids' use of screen time um, and it does a really good job, this book, of warning you of the dangers of screens. Uh, I think the illustration they use is it's like giving a kid uh, you know, or teenager the keys to a car. You want to make sure they understand the dangers of driving and learn all the safety. And so uh, giving our kids one of these glowy rectangles, these phones, is a helpful uh, – it's helpful to think of it like as serious um, – in regards to what it's doing to them spiritually, what it could even do to their future, their careers and such. So a lot of wisdom there, but also it, the book does a great job of pointing out the goodness of, of these devices that we have and how we can use them to glorify God and enjoy Him through them. And so I really love this book. Highly recommend it. A book that I am just starting on reading, but I wanted to show it to you uh, so you can know what I'm reading is Family Ministry Field Guide, How Your Church Can Equip Parents to Make Disciples, and thinking through how how we uh, organize the church and how we, uh, the culture of our homes is, uh, how do we encourage a disciple-making culture among uh, our families. So I'm really excited to dig in more to that one. I'm, I'm just kind of uh, barely into it. And then I uh, wanted to give a resource that I think is really uh Suitable for multiple ages. Uh, if you're looking for things outside of Scripture to help disciple your kids, one thing that I know has helped me and my walk with Christ is the example of believers that have gone before me. So I, I call it Christian biography. And um, there's just so many stories that we can learn from of how God has used different people of the faith for for hundreds and hundreds of years now. And so I really enjoy this book called Trial and Triumph, Stories from Church History. It's from Canon Press. And it's basically just, you have like, here's a, here's a, a story of a person, and then it'll go on for maybe like five pages of, of reading. So short stories. Some of them will have nice little pictures like this one does. Uh, so I really enjoy this book. Uh, my kids are probably still a little too young for it, um, but I would say once you're really grade school, uh, all the way through youth group, uh, this book is a great resource. Try on Triumph. Now I'm going to move into some uh, resources that I wanted to show you online for you youth parents. So let me get adjusted here real quick. Uh, first thing I want to show you here is the Gospel Coalition. They've got a lot of great resources right now, especially on the coronavirus. Uh, they've been pumping out articles left and right 
that are just really helpful in how we consider uh, all the all the things that are going on in light of that. So this is a great resource for parents and grandparents uh, with kids of all ages. And uh, from this point on, I really want to dive into more resources that are directed at kids. And so uh, if you're a youth parent, there's still a lot of help to be gleaned here, but just know that uh, that's where the resources I'm going to be showing you uh, are directed more towards uh, kids, mil some middle school age, but uh, but especially we'll look at a lot more um, for elementary aged and below. So uh, first I want to show you, of course, there is the children page of the Gospel Coalition, a lot of great resources there. Uh, here's an app that I've used in the past at different times called Parent Q. Uh, you can track your child, you know, just considering how long they have till they're graduating, different classes, how much time you have with them. Uh, so you can see, for example, here he keeps up their days to their graduation or the weeks to their graduation, which is just a really humbling way to think about our parenting. You know, it's it's almost that Psalm 90, teach us to number our days that we would gain a heart of wisdom. And applying that to our parenting and recognizing that uh, realistically for a lot of our kids, they're going to move out after high school or maybe if they go to college or community college, they may stay around for that after that. But eventually they will move out and uh, that's that's when you're, you know, after that, your role with them changes f forever. And so um, Parenting Q just has a lot of helpful stuff. Uh, there's videos on here, little devotionals. All kinds of stuff so I really enjoy that one uh, the women's missionary union or the WMU has uh, put out some free discipleship resources to help uh, to help you talk to your kids about missions this is the uh, material that we've been using for our CIA our children in action Sunday school uh, every week uh, so we've been using that for since really I think last summer or so or the fall and uh, I've really enjoyed it, and um, a lot of that same material is here, but modified so that you can easily go through it with your kids at home, and they do a lot of the legwork for you. So definitely make sure to check out uh, the WMU Children's Miss You page that I have here, and you can see the link at the top if you need that. Uh, and then there's also Lifeway. They have uh, kids at home resources that they've put out. So you can see here, if you go to their kids ministry section, and you go to this article that was published a few days ago. Um, there are the steps that you would need to access some free teaching that they have there. So make sure to check that out. Uh, the Gospel Project is a good resource. A lot of good stuff that Lifeway puts out. Uh, and now I want to kind of turn to talk about some books that I'm using with my kids. Uh, some different Bibles that I mentioned if you didn't get a chance to read it. Uh, I wrote a blog earlier this week, and I will put the whole blog uh, in the footnotes for this video uh, down below, so you can go and read it. But I did mention a couple of these Bibles uh, in there, but let me just jump right into it. Here's a couple of just books that I like. I picked this up at uh, the conference that Pastor Kendall and I went to in February, uh, Church ABCs. So again, an a resource similar to the one I showed you earlier. This is great for, you know, elementary, maybe uh, middle school, definitely high school, all, like all those ages there. This one's better for little kids, uh, learning their ABCs with church history. What a great way to introduce your kids to the heroes of the Christian faith. And every page just has a, a nice big drawing telling you about that person, some facts about them, some, uh, you know... A neat story maybe from their life so just introducing your kids to uh, these great heroes of the faith so I'm really enjoying that one and then there's a lot of cool books like this one this is from Crossway Sophie and the Heidelberg cat If you never heard of the Heidelberg catechism it's a method for teaching your kids uh, theology and truths about the Bible and how we live out our faith and practice uh, that uses a bunch of questions I have a catechism that I'm going to show you guys in a little bit that's a more modern version. But I love books like this that introduce our kids to that. And here's a story of this girl who uh, does something really really mean or terrible or something. I, I can't remember. I've only read it once or twice. Uh, 
but then the cat uh, basically is teaching her about grace. And so, uh, neat little stories like this one that are out there as well. Now I want to show you some of the Bibles that I've used with my kids. Um, the first one here is uh, one of my favorites, the Jesus Storybook Bible. This uh, Bible, I really enjoy the artwork in this one. Uh, really beautiful. Here's like a Tower of Babel story. You can see the artwork here. Uh, about five minutes or so for each uh, story in here. And the stories all try to come back to Jesus. And that's every story whispers his name is the tagline. So this book talks a lot about God's not never ending, always and forever love and his goodness to us. Uh, and it often points us back to Jesus. Um, I think it's pretty well written. So it doesn't it doesn't cover everything, but it covers a lot of the uh, the stories that uh, kind of the, what would maybe be considered the more main stories of the Bible. There's you know some stories that our kids' ministries don't really cover as frequently. So this one kind of covers all the main ones. This is a great book, <clears throat> the gar uh, the garden, the curtain, and the cross that I really enjoy. It just tells us why did Jesus have to come to die, and so it answers the question of the necessity of uh, of Christ's death, his propitiation, his work on the cross. Beautiful uh, page artwork here. Makes everything very practical. Um, talking about the temple, especially, uh, I think it really does a great job. Uh, as a parent, like I've actually really enjoyed these books, just how, how easy it makes some of this stuff, like the temple and God's presence being there. And then when the, tur when the curtain is ripped in two, it describes it as God tearing down his keep out sign that we can now have access to his presence through Jesus because uh, uh, to God through Jesus um, because of what Christ has done. God inviting us to his forever kingdom. Uh, I love this book. Ethnically diverse, beautiful drawings. Great, great little book. Uh, this one is one of my son's favorites. Uh, it's called Five Minute Bible Stories. I think he just really likes the artwork. Very colorful artwork, as you can see. Here's the wall of Jericho. Uh, and these these stories are actually extremely short, probably two or three minutes uh, tops for, for these ones. Um, so you can see like it's done just like that. And um, the thing that I don't like about this one, though, is the story is in pretty abruptly. There's no, like, kind of, like, the Jesus Storybook Bible really kind of brings it back to Jesus and how it all, like, everything's pointing to him. And this one is really disjointed, and it'll bounce from story to story without any kind of connection. So if you're reading one story one night and then the next the next night, the kids may be like, you know, well, how did we get here? Uh, that was just kind of a jump. So just, just know that. This one uh, is tied in with the Gospel Project. Uh, Bible stories in five minutes. Uh, my kids really like this one too. This one kind of um, it when it gets to the New Testament, it really just hits on some of Jesus's parables and the stories that he taught. It doesn't talk about uh, the spread of the gospel after Christ's death and resurrection. It actually ends with the Great Commission, and so. Um, it's really just kind of it's a it's more to me a preschool level um, Bible here, but this is the Bible we've actually moved on to, and I'll just say my kids listen to stuff like um, the Magic Tree House I think is is what's called and other audio books using Alexa in our house, and so my kids are used to listening for longer periods of time at this point they've really developed that skill over the last half year or so um, for a frame of reference my daughter is in kindergarten and my son is a preschooler and so these stories they've really done a good job of listening to them and one thing i really like about uh this bible i don't think i've shown it to you yet, the gospel story bible is that every story ends with three questions to really help you see the kids were listening and help them my kids know the questions are coming now because we're about 60 something pages or stories into this one and so they know dad's gonna be asking us questions and so they they listen really good and the questions often do a good ch job of like tying in important elements of the story just to reinforce it uh, it only has one picture typically on the pages so again there is a lot more reading than um 
pictures like these other Bibles. But at my kids' development level now, uh, this book has been really great. They read other books before they go to bed too with lots of pictures of them. So um, they've done a really good job of absorbing uh, more reading from dad and less pictures. So again, just use discretion with your kids there uh, with what they can handle. But the thing I like about this one is it also ends every story tying it into the gospel, tying it into uh, maybe not always Jesus, but something about who God is or what he's done. And so there's always a good tie-in. I always feel like uh, the devotions here are a nicely tied bow but they also continue the scripture more thoroughly. So like we're 60 stories in and we're only on Elijah right now in the Old Testament. So you get a lot more stories here than you get in some of these other Bibles uh, where they just kind of hit some of the highlight stories of the Old Testament. So uh, there are other ones. I really like the big picture storybook Bible. Uh, I couldn't find it it's somewhere in our house, but we really like that one. Uh, and then the catechism that I mentioned earlier, the one that we're using right now with our kids, you can get this for like a dollar or two dollars online, is the New City Catechism for Kids, uh, Questions for Our Hearts and Minds. And the thing that I enjoy about catechisms is it's a good uh, formal way to help ask your kids questions about the faith. And really you can use it as a springboard to talk about these things. Uh, it's a little more advanced than... Um, like some of these questions my kids aren't ready for yet. So like, for example, uh, what are the sacraments or ordinances? Sacraments and ordinances, those are big words for my kids at their age of development. Um, but I can ask, you know, what are the what are the ways that we remember Jesus in the church or something? And I could just talk about how uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper are two of the ways that, that we do that. So uh, leads to good conversations. If you do like one of these a day with your kids or you just kind of um, go through them over and over and over and over they eventually memorize this stuff and um, anyways really good stuff there's a number of catechisms out there but if you're kind of lost as a parent and you don't know what how to teach your kids uh, catechisms are a really helpful place to start in addition to reading and um, those are just some resources I have uh, that I've enjoyed there are tons out there now um, so if you have any resources that you would like to, uh, to comment on or, or maybe recommend, feel free to mention that in the comments below and we can all dialogue. So without further ado though, this has been Matt. I hope this video has been helpful for you and we'll ta talk to you later.